Your heart's pounding. You've been locked in for 14 straight hours. And you're still not tired. No hunger, no sleep. Just your brain stuck on one spreadsheet cell like it's the most important thing in the universe. This isn't burnout. It's modafinil, the so-called smart drug you took to get ahead. But here's a twist. It was never designed for healthy people like you. And the deeper problem? It can quietly erase the very focus you're chasing. And by the time you realize it, the damage is already done. The worst part? You don't feel it slipping until it's gone. And who am I to burst the bubble on Silicon Valley's favorite smart drug? My name is Dr. Salman Aziz Mirza, triple board certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine. And I've seen how chasing a productivity pill can leave you more exhausted, anxious, and unfocused than when you started. Most people think that modafinil is a cutting-edge smart drug. Truth is, it's been around since the early 1990s, and it was never built for healthy brains. The French company that made it called it Mododial, and their goal was simple, help patients with narcolepsy, a rare brain disorder that makes you collapse into sleep without warning. Picture this, you're driving, then you're waking up in a ditch. That's who it was made for, not you, bleary-eyed at 2 a.m mistaking exhaustion for unlocking your potential. It also helped night shift workers, nurses, factory crews, whose internal clocks were scrambled. But somewhere along the line, it slipped from hospitals into college dorms, trading floors, and startup offices. And that's when the story changes. Here's the twist. Modafinil isn't even a classic stimulant. Meds like Adderall flood your brain with dopamine. Modafinil works differently, and frankly, it's still not exactly sure how it works. It's hypothesized to work by affecting orexin or hypocretin, a neurotransmitter involved in regulating arousal and wakefulness, and appetite too. You don't get that jittery coffee buzz, so it feels safer. But different doesn't mean better. There's also r modafinil, modafinil's longer-lasting cousin, but to most people, they're the same thing. Both keep you awake for 12 to 15 hours, and the FDA has only approved them for sleep disorders. Anything else, like ADHD, depression, focus, is all off-label. Less research, less certainty, more risk. Which is why the internet says one thing, and medical journals say something completely different. The gap between hype and science, that's where things get dangerous. And we're about to walk straight in. There is one group that might benefit from modafinil, and it's not read as productivity hackers. It's people with ADHD, who can't take usual meds. For most, stimulants like Adderall, Ritalin, Vyvanse are all game changers. About 70% respond well to them. But that leaves 30% still struggling. And for them, the side effects can be brutal. Racing heart, panic attacks, sleepless nights, dangerous weight loss. Sometimes it's not choice, it's medical walls too heart problems, eating disorders, severe anxiety. These make stimulants unsafe and send doctors looking for off-label lifelines. That's where modafinil walks in. It's not FDA approved for ADHD, but it's easier on the heart, less appetite suppression, and sometimes better tolerated with anxiety. On paper, clever workaround. In real life, a little bit more complicated. Picture a college student whose heart races dangerously on Adderall, still unable to focus in class or a parent who drops 20 pounds on Vyvanse and can't keep it on. For them, modafinil is a last resort. But last resorts carry last ditch risks. Because here's the catch. Modafinil doesn't hit core ADHD symptoms as hard. Staying awake isn't the same as staying on task. And if it falls short, you risk being undertreated or psychologically hooked on something that was never meant to be plan A. So the question becomes, When does finding an alternative quietly turn into settling for less? In the movie Limitless, one pill makes Bradley Cooper a genius. New languages overnight, patterns nobody else sees, solving problems before they exist. That fantasy? It's exactly what people think modafinil is. Forums are full of wild claims. Laser focus, perfect memory, creativity bursts, superhuman multitasking. Sounds incredible. Until you ask, how much is real, and how much is placebo wraps in hype? 
because in controlled studies on healthy people, the effects are underwhelming. Slightly more alert, minor memory boosts, but big ticket stuff, reasoning, problem solving, learning speed, no change. You're the same brain, just awake longer. Think of it like leaving your laptop on all night. Same machine in the morning, only the battery's more drained. Creativity, often worse. Tunnel vision focus on one thing while the rest of your project dies on your desk. Multitasking, forget it. You'll perfect one paragraph for six hours while deadlines rot. The irony, you feel proud of that one paragraph while everything else collapses. And when people think that they're smarter, they take bigger risks and make worse decisions faster. That's not a gift, that's a trap. Which takes us to the part nobody wants to talk about, the damage hiding under the surface. Here's what nobody warns you about modafinil, the side effects that sneak in quietly. First, your sleep shifts, not just trouble falling asleep. Even when you do sleep, you get less deep restorative rest. Your brain never fully powers down. It's still lit up, stuck on that spreadsheet cell from 14 hours ago. You wake after eight hours feeling like you barely closed your eyes. And day by day, the debt builds up until you need modafinil just to feel normal. Then there's the modafinil blues. The drug wears off and it's like someone muted your emotions. Happiness dulls, music feels flat, friends, family, passions, nothing sparks. That crash can last hours and sometimes days. Appetite, food loses taste. Eating becomes a chore. Some lose weight so fast it's kind of scary. Others live on bland survival rations. It's not just diet, it's joy slowly fading from something as basic as eating. Then there's the emotional numbness. Highs and lows disappear. Work turns robotic. Relationships fade because you're there, but not really there. Often, friends notice before you do. Worst of all, psychological dependence. Not classical addiction, but the belief you can't function without it. Days without it feel impossible. Confidence drains away because you think the pill was doing all the work. And all of this undercuts the reason you took it, leaving you more tired, more distracted, less creative than before. So why do people still line up for something that leaves them emptier? Here's the reality of modafinil use, and it almost always plays out like a three-act roller coaster. Phase one, the honeymoon. You feel sharper, faster, unstoppable. Work that used to take hours now flies by. You're staying on task, ticking off your to-do list, maybe even tackling projects you've put off for months. Every hour feels productive and you start wondering how you ever managed without it. This is the hook, the part that keeps people coming back for more. Phase two, the cracks. Then little things start to slip. Sleep gets strange. You're lying in bed, eyes wide open at 2 a.m., knowing the alarm is only four hours away. The hyper-focus that once felt like a superpower starts locking in onto the wrong targets. You spend six hours reorganizing your files while urgent deadlines creep closer. The work still feels urgent, but it's the wrong work. Meals get skipped because you're not hungry. Conversations with friends feel flat and you notice it's been days since you did anything creative just for fun. You start to realize the trade-off might not be worth it. Phase three, the fallout. This is when the pill stops feeling like a choice. On days you skip it, motivation drops through the floor. You feel foggy, sluggish, almost resentful of the work waiting for you. The energy and focus that hooked you in phase one, they're gone, replaced by a disrupted sleep, a dulled mood, and a creeping fear that you can't function without it. It's not about getting ahead anymore. It's about trying not to fall behind. And here's the kicker. This arc can happen in weeks or it can sneak up over months. But when it hits, it's hard to ignore. And yet, people still step right up for their turn on the ride. Which leads to the final question. If the ride almost always ends the same way, why are so many people still lining up before it resets? Modafinil isn't a smart drug. It's a wakefulness drug. It can keep you alert longer, but awake isn't smarter. Your brain runs the same, often at the cost of sleep, mood, creativity. And if those go, so does everything you are trying to boost. 
If you want real cognitive gains, the basics still win. Consistent sleep, regular exercise, and if you have ADHD or another condition, the right treatment plan. The most powerful brain booster isn't a pill, it's protecting the systems your brain depends on. So what can you do in the next 24 hours? Before you even think about modafinil, track your sleep for the next three nights. If you're under seven hours, you don't need a wakefulness drug. You need to fix why your brain isn't resting. For many, that reason is ADHD. It's linked to poor sleep is stronger than most realize. And fixing one can transform the other. But most people get it backward and pay the price in both focus and rest. That's why my next video dives into how ADHD wrecks your sleep and how better sleep can actually improve your ADHD. I'll link it down below so you can find out if you've been fixing the wrong problem all along. Until next time, be safe and be well.